downtown municipal auditorium hacksaw butch reed going against nature boy rick flair for the nwa world's heavyweight title a fantastic crowd on hand for this event flair getting up slowly in the ring we've joined this match in progress hacksaw butch reed i tell you what it's one of the greatest pure athletes in wrestling if not the greatest athlete a pure athlete in professional wrestling and uh i'll tell you i what a classic battle this is because i gotta think these two guys joel are very very evenly matched uh i think as far as strength and there you see right there a standing vertical suplex that's one of flair's p favorite maneuvers but reed can match maneuver hole for hold with anybody in wrestling and i mean anybody in wrestling well, reed is right now at this point the number one contender for the world's title Flair has got him rolled up and using the ropes to his advantage, but Reed keeps getting a shoulder up. Reed, with that fantastic strength, manages to get a shoulder up even under the uh, pressure and leverage that Ric Flair was putting on him, uh, especially with the addition of those ropes. Headlock takeover, but it's going to take more than a headlock to pin Hacksaw Butch Reed. Reed goes for the leg scissors, but Flair reverses it, and Reed wow. gets up. Listen to that crowd. What strength this man has. Reed has reversed it back into a rear double cup, and now he's got R Flair in trouble. That's the maneuver that Kerry Von Erich defeated Ric Flair with in Texas Stadium. And R Reed, his concentration was broken there. That's, that's something he's got to eliminate when he goes against Flair for the world's title Saturday night in the Superdome. He's got to maintain that concentration because he's got all the physical tools it takes to become the first black world's heavyweight champion. He just got to keep that concentration, keep that intensity, because that's that's Flair's forte. He will maintain the intensity no matter if the, if the match is one hour or all night. Well, Reed reversed the arm whip, and now he's got the sleeper locked in on Ric Flair. Jim, as you were saying before, Reed is, uh, uh, Flair is definitely a man with a lot of intensity. He's definitely not a paper champion. He defends his title against some of the best people in wrestling. But uh, some folks have said that on occasion, Ric Flair will get himself intentionally disqualified when he gets in a bad way. And uh, of course, Saturday night, that's not going to help him a bit because that match is a no disqualification match. So if he wanted to throw, uh, if he wanted, you know, if he's, he cannot get himself disqualified to save himself, let's put it that way. Uh, it's, that battle will be settled, and that's I, I, I appreciate and I, I respect the NWA for writing that into the clause. I know that Flair is not happy about the clause whatsoever, but I think it's fair and it's just considering his past actions. And right here, Reed has got those huge arms wrapped around, and once again, the only thing that's keeping Hacksaw Butch Reed being the new world's heavyweight champion is the bottom rope. Well, Jim, I'd like to add at this point that we'll be hearing some comments from Ric Flair after this match about his upcoming match with Butch Reed. And Jim, as intense as Ric Flair is, oh, Ric Flair got the knees up and managed to put him into the midsection of Hacksaw Butch Reed. As I was saying, Jim, as, in, in, as intense as Nature Boy Ric Flair is, Hacksaw Butch Reed can match intensity with anybody. He had so much fire and so much drive as he dominated the Mid-South area. So much intensity. The intensity, intensity was so great, it forced the Junkyard Dog to leave the Mid-South area. Of course, the Junkyard Dog, a legendary figure in the Mid-South, but uh, a little too tough with Hacksaw Butch Reed nipping at you night after night, day after day. And, of course, Reed is, is getting set for the biggest match of his career. I've talked with him, talked with him a couple of times this week already. Uh, I, his mental aspect and that right hand, that's the way he is right now. He is, he is ready to go. I think that, and I really sincerely believe this, I'm looking for a weakness in the armor, and I don't see how Ric Flair is going to beat Hacksaw Reed. Well, I don't know if Ric Flair sees it either. Whoa, look at that arm whip. He just whipped him right up over the turnbuckles. I don't know if Ric Flair sees the, the chink in the armor either, Jim, because he put out a bounty on Hacksaw Butch Reed. He, he offered Dirty Dutch Mantell money to put Reed out, and Dirty Dutch Mantell couldn't get the job done. As a matter of fact, last time in New Orleans, Hacksaw Butch Reed became the new Mid-South television champion by defeating Dirty Dutch Mantell. Right here at the Municipal Auditorium, as I said before, Reed goes for the headlock, and Flair catches him a back suplex. Well, he's so intense, as I mentioned earlier, he's a seasoned veteran. 
Ric Flair is at the peak of his career right now. Many people say he's the greatest world champion of all time. And, and that could be true because the competition in 1985 is tougher than it has ever been in professional wrestling. There's more, there's more uh, great superstars in wrestling than ever before. They're bigger, they're better conditioned, they're stronger. And Flair is the number one man uh, in an era when wrestling is really king, 1985. But that man there, Hacksaw Butch Reed, well, I, I just, when you look at supreme athletic ability, he's got it all. And, and of course, but, you know, Flair's just a tremendous athlete. It's going to be something Saturday night. Well, Jim, at this point, Ric Flair is attacking the weakness that every athlete, I don't care how, I don't care how strong you are or how tough you are, every athlete has got a weakness in those knees. We saw Reed have uh, orthoscopic surgery that was done in Tulsa, you know, and, and he was a couple of three days after he had the surgery, he was training again. But Flair, they know these scouting reports. Flair knows as much about Butch Reed as you can possibly know because he knows that Reed is, is the number one contender for the world's heavyweight title. So you can bet that Flair, with all his with videotape and all the things that he has at his availability to him, he knows as much about uh, Reed as anybody. And there he goes, right for the figure four. The knee's weakened. He didn't know he's had surgery. He goes right for the figure four. Hacksaw Butch Reed has got extremely powerful legs. But I don't know if they're going to save him in this instance. Flair is, is building up the momentum on it. He has got the, the figure four locked in tight. Reed looks as if he's trying to get some leverage there and, and possibly try and reverse this hold. Carl Fergie asking if he wants to give it up. And look at the strength. Look at the strength of Hacksaw Butch Reed as he turns Ric Flair, turns him and counters the hold. He's got it reversed. And listen to this crowd. Flair breaks it. And the ropes, the only thing they're saving, Nature Boy Ric Flair, Hacksaw Butch Reed. We talked about his intensity, and I'll tell you what, I think the New Orleans, I think New Orleans in general brings out the best in Hacksaw Butch Reed. He's fighting back Ric Flair, but do not discount the Nature Boy. Flair with a snap mare takes Reed down, and now he's going outside. Looks as if he's going up to the ropes. Coming off that top rope's an automatic disqualification in the Mid-South area. But Hacksaw Butch Reed's going to help. He's going to help him come down, Joel. He brought him down a couple of notches there. All the way from that top rope. Reed, tremendously powerful. Lateral press. He gets a two count. The fans really getting behind Hacksaw Butch Reed now. They want to see a new world's heavyweight champion, as do I. I'd love to see Butch Reed pull that title. I think it'd be great for wrestling. I think it'd be great for the for the sport. I, you know, he's a what an athlete he is, but Flair, bring him right back outside. Now watch Flair and Reed. They're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This this situation is fizzled because Joel the stakes. The stakes are so high. Flair is one of the highest paid athletes in America, and he makes that money by being the heavyweight champion of the world. Well, Flair didn't want to go fist and fire with with Butch Reed out there on the floor, and frankly, I don't blame him. There goes Carl Fergie. A tremendous collision between Ric Flair and Carl Fergie. Butch Reed's got the rear double cup on Flair, and he's got it locked up tight this time. He's got him. One, two. He, we held him for at least a five count there. Flair with that thumb to the eye. We had He had a four or five count there, no doubt about it. Would have had a new world's champion right there. Flair goes over the top rope. The referee, Carl Fergie, there saw that saw that situation. This is what started the controversy in this match, Joel. The, this match that happened a few weeks back. Well, Carl Fergie was getting up slowly, and all he saw was Reed dumping Flair over the top rope. Flair brought back into the ring by Butch Reed with a with a uh, high vertical back suit play. The fans counting. There it is. One, two, three, and it looks to be the new world's heavyweight champion, Hacksaw Butch Reed. You can hear the crowd, they're going absolutely wild. Everybody's standing, they're going crazy. But this, as I said, such a controversy. There you see the man. That should be the new world's heavyweight champion. But the referee was on the outside. The original fall was not counted. But ladies and gentlemen, the controversy, the controversy that surrounds this match is just simply phenomenal. And that's why, Joel, this Saturday night, the rematch, the rematch for the gold with no disqualifications. Well, as you can see here, it looks as if Butch Reed is the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, but there is some controversy with the referees, and an important decision was eventually rendered.